I should have worn my Berkeley shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, got a, I've got a Cal Golden Barrel t-shirt. So welcome back to Great Scott Marcus, episode 27 here on Ramble Entertainment. I'm Scott, and that one's Mark, not my penis, the one, the guy below me, um, which still sounds <laughs> weird. Um, below you. Mark, so we just got done talking about protesting, and here on Ramble Entertainment, and this is a show where we have small topics called Rambles, and then we have a large ramble. Blah, blah, blah. Proper <laughs> intro. Um, Mark, recently, uh, we wanted to talk about protesting for a while, but then, of course, this week, uh, there was protesting at Berkeley, and then there were riots at Berkeley. Mm-hmm. One evolved into the other. And there, I think there is always, always, always a clear line between protests and riots. Protests Agreed. are peaceful, no one gets hurt, or if someone gets hurt, they trip and fall on their face and maybe, unfortunately, get trampled. Don't get trampled out of protest, kids. Um, riots, there is intentional violence, breaking of property, Private property public fires, property. people intentionally injuring other people, attacking other people, threatening other people. Um, so... Yeah, uh, there's a lot to unpack here. D- Donald Trump was like, we're going to pull Ber- Berkeley's funding for, you know, uh, being against free speech, which they completely were not against. It was a very select group of people, maybe like an eighth of the student body or less. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously not an accurate representation from me. That's just a guesstimate. But I have no idea. So... Um. What happened was Milo Scopolopopopoulos. I'm not going to try to pronounce his proper name. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce his last um, name either. Th- this guy <laughs> who, for a long time, has been, um, and I want this is another one I want to be very careful with. Alt right. Um, he's a Breitbart editor. He, he's, so a, he's an ex- that can paint a slight picture of what he stands for. He's, and his, he's kind uh, of an extreme views. conservative. Um, yes. He uh, is against kind of women's rights. He or seems to be. Um, he has confessed to almost being a troll uh, of uh, what he described as conscience, where it seems like he believes that his beliefs are the more moral or better beliefs than others. And so Berkeley had wanted him to come visit their campus and uh, give a talk, um, which there is nothing wrong with. It just Quite makes frankly. no sense to me personally. <laughs> um, I mean, just you know, just knowing you know, you know how his his views are. You know, he's he's very conservative, and uh, you know, Berkeley, San Francisco, it's just very uh, liberal and progressive. And it's just like I almost felt like I mean, I get it. Disaster waiting but, to happen, anyways. <laughs> but that that's the thing. Um, free speech is challenging one's views. Uh, it's mm-hmm. not. It's not just. This is the popular view, and it can't be challenged. And one of the large reasons I wanted to bring this up, Mark, was because of uh, some of these visceral reactions that a lot of people are prone to uh, these days. I wanted to, after hearing about Berkeley, I thought about texting you and saying, man, I'm glad we're not in college right now. <laughs> but that's that's the problem, uh, because... It's not happening all across the nation. It is mm-hmm. these pockets, the, these very particular instances, Berkeley, um, Mizzou, uh, and, like, just, just a couple others here and there. Well, o- I, OSU, know, I'm sure you can always... OSU, say, this I'm isn't sure you, happening at. Like, not that we're aware of. I mean, I'm sure, you know, any any kind of university uh, school ground you go to is going to have some sort of club or someone trying to get signatures you know or possibly some people holding some signs and saying this isn't right let's you know stand for something here um i mean this past week there's also a uh, uh, a protest outside the courthouse in columbus but of course you know it was very peaceful um i think uh, there was some mace uh from the cops but people were kind of flooding into the streets blocking traffic which you can't do um but still you know there was no arrests no one got hurt um it, you know, it's just uh, I think it's around, but then only only when there's riots being incited that there is a big problem. It becomes like national headlines and, um, and like this. Obviously, there were the protests that were highlighted during Donald Trump's inauguration, but it was a big event and there were a lot of protests around it. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
protests get highlighted here and there, but obviously things stand out when there is this outrage. The things like the our background images where like <laughs> dumpsters are on fire, uh, people holding signs that this is war. I hate to tell the people who were a part of this, this is not war. This is <laughs> you, you have yeah. no idea what war looks like. I bring this up all the fucking time. <laughs> you do not know what pain feels like constantly. Uh, you People come up to me and we talk, talk about my issue and they're just like, well, at least you don't have cancer or like it could be worse. It could be cancer. And it's just like, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> you do not know what cancer is like. I do not know what cancer is like. Yeah. We should not postulate on such a thing. These people should not postulate on such a thing. This is not fucking war. You are not a fucking resistance. You are just being violent for the sake of getting on TV and causing trouble. Like, this is not how m you build momentum in a good direction. Yes, fa fascism and racism and sexism <clears throat> is wrong. But that doesn't mean that this is how you write those things. Yeah. Like, do you do you think that people write... Well, okay, actually, that's a horrible example. I was going to say that. <laughs> do you think they write in slavery by having a war? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, I have been seeing this, you know, a lot lately. Not with writing in general, but, um, um, you know, people talking about, you know, on, on the left side about, you know, how change happens. And one of the things they're bringing up is, like, the Boston Tea Party. You know, it's just like those just were revolting against, you know, Britons by having those kind of actually that was a riot, in my opinion, back in those days. And you, and you want to and you want to know what happened? John, Ad, <laughs> John Adams, I think it was John Adams, um, defended the soldiers who shot uh, in court. He defended the shoulders, the shoulders, soldiers. <laughs> he, he defended the soldiers who shot into the crowd, and if I'm not mistaken, he got them off on a uh, not guilty. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the soldiers were being uh, impeded upon by the public in an unruly and, uh, I, I want to say, vicious manner. Basically, the soldiers were being attacked. Yeah. And they had guns! <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, and And that's the thing, like, you, you don't want to, like, when the public forces, like, uh, a soldier or a police officer into a position where they have to use force, like, that is on the public because mm -hmm. they forced that. And and that that's why we have things like cameras and all of this communication proliferated throughout our society to help spread the word, to help spread the truth of what actually happens at these things. And the truth of what actually happened at Berkeley was that there were protests and then there was a movement by people dressed in, in uh, tactical gear in ninja-like guard <clears throat> to hide their identity and to push these protesters into violent acts or to mm -hmm. look like they were participating in violent acts and that uh, that was a it, it was clear as day like it was caught on camera it was caught in imagery and that doesn't look good uh, for those who want to yeah. be leftist or even moderate about this to be like, well, I, w you know, <clears throat> it's fine if Milo Papalopoulos comes and talks at Berkeley, but I'm not going to, you know, support sexist or fascism. Like, I am against that. Protesting those things is okay, but becoming, when you become violent, when you become angry, when you force <clears throat> that speaker to have to leave in a violent manner, that mm -hmm. is where you are in the wrong. I don't think he was, he never even arrived, I don't believe, did he? I, I from what I have read and heard, mm -hmm. the uh, police officers chose to evacuate him. Where they evacuated him from, whether that was like the uh, hotel or whatever he was staying in, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's, yeah. that's what they reported. Here's the thing. Um, I do start, this is where I start to agree with those who are saying that these people who went into violent protesting and hitting others and hurting others and burning things, they proved Milo whatever right. That, you know, like, if if his message is, you know, like, these 
people on the left, mm -hmm. uh, these liberal people are, you know, like wrong. Whatever his message of them being wrong is, they did wrong things. And it highlights the things that he tries to say. It highlights that, like, he was peaceful. He mm -hmm. wasn't, you know, he wasn't inciting violence. Now, Trump, on the other hand, like, <laughs> if, we, if we do want to be a bit political real quick about Trump, they tipped over a... Um, Looks like, like a light. Yeah, it's one of those big lights with the generator, yeah. and they burned it. Um, now, Trump, on the other hand, like, he was in the wrong when he would say things like, you should punch them in the face. You get them the... F out of you, the fuck out yeah. of here. I don't know why I'm censoring myself. Uh, you know, like, uh, th things like that. When he would talk about violent acts against people who wanted to stand against him uh, in his rallies and mm -hmm. things. Um, like, and, and, and that's where we need to draw the line, and we need to, I think, uh, kind of have this moderate middle ground. Do you have things you want to say? Because I feel like I've been talking a lot. Um... Kind of, it's just interesting. You ever uh, watched Milo speak? He's very good at it. Yeah, like he, yeah. He, he's very articulate and he answers questions. He actually answers questions, which you know politicians politicians don't. Um, Stop. You know, and politicians uh -huh. do answer questions. It's just when they don't answer questions, they get highlighted, and we shouldn't go yeah. into generalities. It takes like twenty sentences long. Yeah, um, and, and then no, know, and then it, no one wants to hear it because we have a short attention span. Yeah. Uh, but no, like I, I thought, you know, his the way I don't agree with his message, but he is just he's a very good public speaker, and I think you're right. Like this kind of almost shows, like uh, I don't know, like like he he was in the right, you know, just because like this was supposed to be a peaceful thing, and yeah, that's not the right way to get a message across. I I agree with that, um, but yeah, I don't know. Like I, I feel like if he actually was there to speak the students would have listened they would have answered you know they would have had smart questions and smart answers and almost like you know, bill it, nye versus uh what was that guy who was defending like um you know uh religious kind creationism. of creationism creationism yeah thank you yeah i don't remember who he was um yeah and it's like in watching something like that it was actually quite interesting um you know just because it's interesting to see people's perspectives on exactly. things and um uh, like i said like i don't agree with miles views uh for example like he I, on one of the things he was uh, talking about was he doesn't like the feminist movement, but he believes in equality between men and women. So, it, you know, it's just kind of, you know, strange, like in his mind, like these concepts. Um, but, yeah, it would have been kind of exciting to see like someone like him who's very articulate and well-spoken to uh, speak at Berkeley, which is a very progressive uh, university. Um, so, college. So, like, th there's kind of another thing um, that, and I'll try to make sure I get these images right in post. Um, like, I, I think we could stand to be a bit more careful about how we call someone uh, a Nazi. Um, and the, yeah, the reason I, the reason I want to bring that up is because, like, fine, you might be against like particular things within a conservative view or. Um, maybe some things that tread on a bit of fascism, but that doesn't mm -hmm. entirely make you a Nazi. Like to be clear, Nazis like fucking went to awful, Nazis awful, in awful a... immoral extremes on yeah. some of the things they did. Um, and um, that, that that's another thing here is the extremism that does come from both halves. I think that, um, and here's I think a good conclusive point. Uh, for me, at the very least. Um, lately, I've been hearing a lot of, like, man, you didn't see this happening when Obama was elected, and it's just like... <laughs> yeah, we fucking did. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> um, I, I, I love it when it's just like, it's only been four years. Like, I am right. not that forgetful. Um, th there were all kinds of rep Republicans who were just like, I'm moving to Canada. <laughs> um well, and they said some awful things too, you know. Yeah, they're like, they're, oh, they're he's, he's Muslim, he's a terrorist, and he's gonna bring us all down. And it's just there, like, there the weren't fuck? there weren't protests, or if there were, they weren't uh, large protests. But of course, there were. I think uh, three states, in fact, not just California in this instance, but there were three states that actually applied for secession from the union. Texas um, is one of them. Yeah, Texas. Uh, I believe another was I want to say Utah, um, and. 
Anyway, so, like, this <laughs> shit happens, but we also need to keep in mind, like, the time within this shit happening. So, uh, w within our time frame currently, there were a lot of protests for Black Lives Matter. Again, a simple message that is getting across through these protests where there are all kinds of audits going on for police departments, including Cleveland, which we live near. Um, and... And these audits are actually becoming quite successful in realizing that officers do need a better training and uh, mm -hmm. better supervision. Um, anyway, so like there's a lot of protests going on. So people see this and they know they see that this is a method to act through. However, their messaging is off because it's not a simple message. It's not just Black Lives Matter, which they do. It's not just Women's Rights Matter, which they do. Um, it's all kinds of different messaging about Trump's about, mm -hmm. about fascism, about sexism. And it's just like, it needs to be condensed. If you want to have a protest, a March about just this, then that would be, that should be your point. But like, don't be all over the place. Um, and, uh, I feel like, um, it's, it's just going to too many extremes where it's just like, uh, we don't welcome other views, uh, mm -hmm. and, and that that is where you you're in the wrong because you're treading off of free speech. Um, evangelical pastors were on our campus all the time, and guess what? You could just ignore them, mm -hmm. or you could listen to them. And and if you were feeling calm and comfortable, you could bring out a folding chair, set it on the lawn of the campus, and just sit there and listen and debate them if you wanted. Those are always entertaining to see the, the the person that like debates the uh, yeah the guy that's the, yelling that you know everyone's the, a sinner and you're going to hell if you the masturbate. The people who <laughs> the people who didn't um like get too uh, riley about it they were the best ones though yeah. and you know what they didn't make a scene and they probably were successful <laughs> in a lot of their debating too. I remember one in particular. I was, I was in I was in Bowling Green and uh, you oh, know, there was a guy in, there was always there was a guy in Bowling one Green. Yeah, there was a guy in one corner that was, you know, handing out Bibles and the apocalypse is happening and find, you know, your God and blah, blah, blah. And there's another guy across from him. He's just like, if you masturbate, you're going to hell. <laughs> like, it was, it was, like, it was just funny, you know, and he wasn't like trying. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if he maybe pissed off the other guy or not, but it was just like, that's funny, you know, <laughs> and it's entertaining. And it's just like, it kind of just proves that, uh, I don't know what it proves that, that you can. What year was that when you saw both those guys? Because oh, I recall a similar it was, instance. It was a while ago. I don't remember when it was. Hmm. But it was just... Uh, oh, you, we might have been on the campus at the same time then. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I mean, this, this was down like in the Main Street area. Um, oh, like, okay. Like where all the bars are. Uh, so I, saw, I saw them campus. actually near the Union. Okay. Well, I'm sure they're around all of them. Yeah, place, yeah. But, um, yeah, we need more of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I mean, you're right in... in, in uh, a, a very large sense of that statement like we need more just like okay you guys are protesting here's another big people are protesting and here's mm -hmm. like a barrier but you're allowed to talk to each other mm -hmm. and like m maybe if someone gets frustrated at the front of the line that gives another person the opportunity to come in and be like i know why you know like yeah. from my perspective that you're wrong and like here's my rebuke and like that person's just like hmm I don't agree with you, but like on this point, like you actually mm -hmm. have a really good point. And <laughs> one <can> thing, dream. <laughs> one thing I've really been thinking about lately is actually um, like saving up my money and going around and sitting down, taking the camera, getting a better laptop, and bringing the mic, bringing the the soundboard, and just sitting down and talking to a person and just being mm -hmm. and, and just talking and like especially finding like these these polarizing views and just talking them out and just showing people that we can fucking talk about this shit and it's okay be entertaining it's, it's okay like like i said i have learned how to gain my calm and just you mm -hmm. know like especially on those good days like just go out and just be like look i just want to talk like we don't like, why, where is the anger coming from? Like, mm -hmm. because, because it shouldn't, it shouldn't, you know, like, really be about that. You know, like, mm -hmm. the, the anger shouldn't come from, like, a lot of these topics. It should just be, like, we can talk about this and make things better and find middle ground and, like, right. or, or show to each other why one side is, might be, have something that's wrong with it. Anyway, Mark, let's go get into our topic because I got to get to work and get Chinese.